Hi, Jamie here from The Hedge Teacher. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency and what it is. Cryptocurrency, become enlightened. I've been interested in cryptocurrencies for a few years now and I've been a little bit reluctant to trade them, much less talk about or write about them. So in my vlogs, I want to share with you my knowledge of cryptocurrency, the cryptocurrency markets, and give you a total beginner's guide to trading them. I normally put out two vlogs a week. This, I am going to increase to three. One of these, usually on a Friday, I'm going to dedicate to cryptocurrencies. What they are, how you trade with them, and other information that you need to become enlightened into this amazing technology. Please remember, I am not a financial advisor. I am only sharing this information with you. I'm doing this because of what happened to me in the past in my history and why I've had to do this and learn that so many other people out there know a even a lot less than I do. So before you do anything, seek legal advice if you need to before committing to any transactions, whether crypto or bond based, and only invest in any type of currency if you're willing to lose it. Trading cryptocurrency is kind of like trading a bit of a software stock. Now, you don't need to know how to code, but if you're not good with computers, you may want to learn a little bit about them first and then stay away from the currency until you are just a little bit knowledgeable. Yeah, or at least until they start building a more friendly interface. But when a large exchange company or government announces that they are starting to list a cryptocurrency that you know about or you're using, then it's time for you to take notice. The simplest explanation is that cryptocurrency is a form of digital money that allows you to make purchases online. It uses encryption techniques to regulate its use and generate its release. Unlike fiat currency, like the US dollar, euros or the yen, it is not regulated or controlled by any bank. Although governments and centralized financial authorities are trying pretty hard to regulate them. At this stage, they still use decentralized control as opposed to centralized electronic money and central banking system. This decentralized control of each cryptocurrency works through a blockchain, which is a public transaction database functioning as a distributor ledger. It is run by a network of computers instead of a single person or company. Unlike traditional fiat currency, they can be stored in a bank or in your trading account or stored under your mattress at home. Cryptocurrencies need to have a compatible digital wallet to be stored safely. Each transaction is recorded in what is called a blockchain. Data is stored across a network so it is not susceptible to exploitation by hackers or central bank failure. Each record or series of records on a blockchain is known as a block, and we will discuss this in another video shortly. A block is sent to the network and added to the blockchain after it is accepted by the network as a valid transfer. Once verified, the blocks cannot be changed. According to Jan Lansky, a cryptocurrency is a system that meets all of the following six conditions. 1. The system does not require a central authority to achieve consensus on its state. 2. The system keeps an overview of cryptocurrency units and their ownership. 
Three, the system defines whether new cryptocurrency units can be created. If new cryptocurrency unit can be created, the system defines the circumstances of their origin and how to determine the ownership of these new units. Four, ownership of cryptocurrency units can be proved cryptographically. Five, the system allows transactions to be performed in which ownership of the cryptographic units is changed. A transaction statement can only be issued by an entity proving the current ownership of these units. And six, if two different instructions for changing the ownership of the same cryptographic unit are simultaneously entered, the system performs at most one of them. Now, let's have a look back in history and where cryptos came from, at the early beginnings. Back in 1983, an American cryptographer named of David Charm conceived an anonymous crypt cryptographic electronic money called eCash. Later, he implemented it through DigiCash, an early form of cryptographic electronic payments. This made it untraceable by the issuing bank, government, or third party. There were many attempts at creating a digital currency during the 90s tech boom, but most of those systems Failed. Then, in 2009, an anonymous, anonymous programmer or group of programmers, we're never really sure, we still don't know, under an alias of Satoshi Nakamoto, introduced Bitcoin. Satoshi described it as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. The concept closely resembles peer-to-peer -peer networks for file sharing. One of the biggest problems any payment network has is to solve double spending. The trusted way was a third party, a central server that kept records of the transactions. This method always entailed an authority basically in control of your funds and with all your personal details. This is where a decentralized network comes in. Via what we talked about, a blockchain. Cryptocurrencies offer a new way of storing and spending money, anonymously, and at the moment without the use of a centralized bank or financial institution. The technology is relatively new so it is not yet widely understood or fully accepted as a means of payment. But it is growing quickly and will be an important method for financial transactions in the future. It's fast, it's wild, and nearly every day a new cryptocurrency emerges. Some are making money, whilst others are losing it. So, do your homework and be careful. That is my basic understanding given to you of cryptocurrencies. We will get more in-depth as we go on. Please, don't keep this a secret. Share this with your friends and family. If we don't look after ourselves, no one else will. So please like, share, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my journey as we go deeper. Until next time, this is Jamie at theheadsteacher.com.